um, I, I'm sorry, but I just realized that I did not do uh, so, and I did not share the screen. Okay, well. Sure. All right. Okay. And you guys can see the, the, the browser, right? I have been like talking for five minutes and I just realized that I forgot to share the, the browser. All right, let's uh, go over again. I'm so sorry. All right, so uh, let's, let me move my browser. Let's down. So here, um, as you can see, as you guys can see that I have a uh, PBX IP address. So that is my PBX server address and we will be using the uh, 8080 port. So let's create another. Okay, so Part okay, and for here the login credential would be exactly the same that you use to um to log in for your uh, PBX. So right here I have my amends to log in, click on submit, and you will get you will lead to this page, and you will be um setting up the operator users for your um, operator panels. So on the users, you can click on new and create the operator um, user here by choosing the, um, the master extension. Call Emily here, the first one. And I have my password one, two, three, four, five, six. Right here is the place that you can create um, multiple operator users to use the operator panels and for groups so the groups we support a unlimited number of groups so you can create as many as you need within your technical support departments or the extension for your technical support departments into one group and all the extension for your marketing for another groups so be creating the uh, the news here and giving the names and and choosing the and choosing the extensions and settings. So we left here. So on the setting, so this uh, operator panel is is use the um the functional module device, which means that you guys can, if there is a function that you think that you won't use at all, that you can um actually turn the module off and it won't show up on the on the panels. So for the modules we have built it is the uh, wake up. So we have the wake up call modules. Let me see. back to the um and as you guys can see from the um, the operator panels, we have the wake up call features here. So that is actually a uh, module. If you don't want to, if you won't use the uh, wake up call modules that you can turn it off from the setting page. Let me move back to this page. And we have the uh, wake up call, we have the contract, which is the uh, address, uh, address book. And we have the black and we have the call forwarding. So um, it will be regarding two different application scenario. So um, for example, the wake up call would be probably more than likely to use in a hotel situation. They need to wake up their, um, their guests. Their, um, so they would use the wake up call, but if, you, if the PBX is using in a enterprise, that the wake up call, uh, just probably not going to use. So that way you can turn off the wake up call modules. Um, same as the another um, the call forward module. If you are in a hotel, you probably won't use the call forward call forwarding um, features at all. So um, in that way that you can turn the modules off. If you guys, so um, we have implemented only four. 
is it four? Um, yeah, four modules here. So if you guys um, have any um, ideas or interest or any requests on the module that we can actually put in on our um, operator panels, please feel free to let us know. And we would love to see in your feedbacks and your um, your suggestion on how we can implement like adding more modules into our operator panels. And uh, we also we have the um, devout here. So right here is actually um, using a URL as a post body um, signals, which means like any um, data that is updated in our PBS, we can actually send it to another server using a uh, URL. These things is more for a tenant. And, and it usually it it basically used with a integration with a third party uh, systems, and we have the debug, and you can check like all the, the um all the data systems information here. So that is a very basic and brief introduction on the um on this operator. Um, Panel setting page. So where you going? So you are going to access this page using your IP PBS. Port is eighty eighty, and it has to be a U sixty, U eighty, or a U hundred system version three point three point one or above. So it will be it has to be using the latest uh, version. And uh, let's see what else. And let's move back to the operator panels. Okay, and here is the operator panel. So it is a software application that you can um, install it on a uh, Windows systems or a Mac OS or a Linux. So um, would be simply downloading the software from our website and install it and then let me uh, log out here. So log out. So after you install the um, the software applications, you will be using the operator user that we just created from the uh, setting page to log in here. And for the first, the top um, bar, the input bar would be the IP the uh, part. 8080s, and I just created a operator user called Emily and my password logins. And um, let's see what else. Okay, so one thing we need to be aware of is the uh, extension that you choose with the operator user. It has to be in at least one queue. If the extension is not in any of the queues, you can see on the right side, there is a queuing cost. It will be keep loading. So for now, we need to um, go back to our PBX and putting my extension into a queue. So let me log into my uh, PBX. And then I need to put the extension that I use as a master extension to get in at least one queue. So let me select, where is my extension? 1005. You go submit. Right. And let me switching back to the panels and refresh the page. Okay, so for now that you guys can see the queuing cards, uh, it, the loading um, icon is gone. So let us a uh, brief introduction on these operator panels. And I believe you guys probably familiar with the operator panels already. 
So this operate if you guys um using our IP audio solutions, you would realize that this operator panel it has a similar styles and um, it looks similar to our dispatch console. So um on the top navigation bar, the very on the very left corner we have a uh we have a digital panel that you can use this panel to dial a call. So you'll be like um, copy and paste a very long um, phone numbers and then click on the dials to dial a, um, a number. And then from the uh, left to right, we have the wake up call. So as I mentioned that it is a module defy if you don't want to use, if you don't want your operator to the wake up call features or you don't need to use the call forwarding or the backlist feature you can actually turn it off and after you turn it off it won't be so up on the uh, panels here so let's turn them all on so we have a wake up call so simply click on the edge and you can choose the extension to add a wake up call right okay And we have the address book that you can uh, manually add in the address into the address book here. And also blacklist. So would be the, the, phone, the, the number that you put into the blacklist and it will block out to call in. And we have the call forwardings. That would be the feature that you set up a specific extensions and any come to this extension, it will be flowing to another destination, um, depends on the static. So if you are choosing like forward or my extension like 105, and you will be, um, the destination will be mob my mobile phones, my cell phone. So I can put up my cell phone numbers here for the uh, call forwardings, cancels and, uh, for the call history that you can check on all the call history here by se selecting the time period and also you can search so it is safe for see um search that you can by um a um with characters or like with names or with phone numbers and we can do a search here and uh let's back to the um the main page, the main um, interface here. So for the uh, main interface, the middle sections that you guys can see that we have all the extensions listed here. And these little icons on the extension showing the static of the um, of the extension. So we have a extension that it is in a red icon. That means the um, this extension extension is in a call and also from the right navigation bar, uh, right, nav right panels, you guys can see that there is a section called the current cost. So it will be showing that, uh, which extension is making a call. And um, as a operator user, you can to park the call and also change so after you call the change, after you like click on the park, it will be dispatching to the um the park card list, and you can transfer it or hang up. And for more uh, features, you can actually bug it, split, monitor, and whisper with the call. And also here will be showing the uh, message, the voice uh, message, how many voice message message that you have. So for this extension, I have seven uh, voice message. And uh, let's see, oh, all right. So for the uh, for this navigation bar, it is the groups. So we can set up different groups. So in, um, like we have the marketing departments and that is the testing groups, okay. So we'll be showing different groups and what extension is actually in the groups. So what else? Let's see. We have the uh, extension. So 
also for the free extension that the extension is not in the call and they are available to you, you can actually click on the dialed uh, button and it will link to your master phone to make the call to this um, AO2 extension. And also we have the uh, DND. Here's the DND. So the DND is do not disturb. So if you have the DND on, then no call can come to these extensions. And let's move in to the right side. So on the right of the, um, the panels, we have the queuing calls and we also have the check-in and check-out. I'm not sure it's like how should we translate it. So we, I'm not sure if like, are you guys suggesting we sign in and sign out or check in or check out? Because the purpose on the check in and check out is if you have the uh, check ins on, all the call coming to this queue would be listening um, on this list. And then the operator can be dispatching the calls to different, um, to different uh, destinations. And if the, um, the, the, the bottom is to the checkout side, that would be the operator will be have the ability to um, like dispatching and managing calls. So I think check-in or sign-in both work anyways. And uh, for the middle um, panels, we have the current calls. So it will be so on the calls current calls um, within the uh, PBX. And we also have the public call. And on the uh, top right corner of the top panels, we have the night shift mode. So the night shift mode would be, if you are enabled the night shift mode, you'll need to input in a uh, extension number here. So if, you, if this setting is enabled, it, all the call would be coming to these extensions. So all the call calling to this cube or these numbers will be all forwarding to this um, A36, this extension number. And for the uh, little user icon, we have the setting for choosing a language. So uh, for now, we have only English and Chinese available. If you guys are interested, please contact us to put in your, um, your language, such as like Spanish, French. And also we have the uh, about that would be using the server address and also the uh, versions and logout. And then let's see what else. And um, let's move back to the left navigation bar, we have this meeting. So as usual, we support 10 meeting rooms, but for now we just visualize the meeting rooms instead of like using the PBX and we know that like, the conference room numbers and uh, we can also like inviting the participants to join the conference using our SIP phones. So for now, everything is visualized that you can choose a conference room and then inviting a extensions. And then click on submit and it will be directly calling this extension number and invite them for to participate in the conference. So there are two ways to join a conference. For the first day would be inviting from the uh, and um, actually there is three ways. So uh, one way would be inviting from the uh, panels and the, uh, from the panels, it does not require for a password, but if you would like to drive the uh, conference room using the conference room number, such you dial 90, it would be requiring you to input the uh, password to get into the conference room. So, we have the uh, conference room here, and let's have a quick example. Let's see, I have my extensions, and 
I need to choose a uh, another extension here. Then click on submit. Okay, A13 is here. And we are waiting for a uh, participant. Probably she's not. Um, so if we click on the extensions um, users, we can mute, remove, or cancel. So if we mute, we can unmute. And then we can remove, like to kick out, to kick out these um, extensions and also can be canceled to cancel the operations. Let's end the meeting here. Great. And then that is the uh, conference page. So uh, for the music, so we did not implement the uh, full set of music features within the first version, which is our 1.0.0. But the, um, the next available versions of our operator panels, we have implemented the music and also the tasks into these um, operator panels. So what the music would be similar to our um, dispatch console uh, from our um, IP, uh, IP audio. So on this music, you can actually upload the music to these operator panels and then creating the playlist and use like I would say like devices to play music that so um, in that case you can register speaker right you can actually register speaker in onto your IP PBS and using the uh, these operator panels to play music through the speaker but but one thing we need we do need to be aware of is uh, since if you are using, like let's assuming that you register the horn speaker into um, in, onto your PBX and then you want to play background music, since it will be using the SIP, the section initial protocol card to process the, um, the media, uh, like the media stream. So the sound quality of using a SIP protocol card would not be, as good as using a media streaming podcast to process the um the audio there because like SIP is more mainly decided for use use to process like audio but not for like a high quality music but it's still a idea so like sometimes we need to think outside of the box and we need to like brainstorming what other application scenario that we can find with the TV not only to make a phone call, right? So PBS, for now we can actually register the speaker onto the PBS and we can make the paging using your phones. So you can actually grab in your phones and making any emergency announcements in that case. And also um, if you don't mind on the sound qualities, if you are in a noisy environment, then that also outside, you can register devices, it has to be SIP. So you can address the SIP speaker, um, like horn speaker or like a column speaker onto the uh, PBX and using this panel to play music, right? And also for the tasks that if you guys have used our um, IP audio, um, the dispatch console, that we have tasks that you can actually use like to set task and play it within a specific period of time and like such as on Monday to Friday at 5 p.m. I would need to play a after school announcement then that way you can actually use a PBX to real life. So the music and the tasks would be the two modules that we are going to add to these operator panels. 
then uh, we are so that two modules is already in a um, like a beta um, stage, and we are expecting to um, to use it somewhere uh, in next month. Also, if you guys are interested in testing the music or um, testing the task uh, features, uh, please feel free to contact me and I can send you the latest um, the beta uh, software that for you to test. So let's move back to the uh, different page. So for now, we have implemented the bigger call. We have the address book, the back list, and we have the call forwarding call. And we are going, and also the meeting, the conference, and also we are going to have the our music and tasks for uh, next month. That would be the, the updated versions of the operator panels. Let's see what else. I think that should be it for my uh, like a very brief introduction to our operator panels um yeah introductions and um yeah so let's see if you guys have any ideas or uh, any suggestion that we can improve with our operator panels and uh, for this whole purpose we'll be correcting our customers uh, feedback